Erev Tov Rabotai, we are continuing with the Mishnah Yomi. Bezrat Hashem, we are beginning our new Mesechet in the Mishnayot, Mesechet Megillah. Just to read to you the introduction brought down in the art school, elucidated, describing what the Mesechet is about, what is Megillat Estel. Megillat Estel, which translates in English the scroll of Estel, relates how the Jewish population of the Persian Empire was saved from destruction. Haman, a high-ranking officer in the court of King Achashverosh, plotted to kill all the Jews in the empire, but his plans were thwarted by Mordechai, the spiritual leader of the Jewish people, and his adopted daughter, Esther. Instead of being killed by their enemies, the Jewish people fought back and succeeded in defeating them. They celebrated their victory with feasting and rejoicing, so to commemorate those events, Mordechai and Estelle proposed the annual festival of Purim, which was enacted into law by the men of Great Assembly, the Anshei Knesset Agedola, of which Mordechai was a member. Now, the Megillah relates that in most parts of the Persian Empire, the Jews fought and defeated their enemies on the 13th of Adar, and they celebrated their victory on the next day, the 14th. In the capital of Shushan, however, they fought for an extra day and did not celebrate until the 15th. So to commemorate those two original days of celebration, the 14th and 15th of Adar, the sages established two different dates for Purim. In most places, Purim is observed on the 14th, but in any town or city that resembles Shushan, in that it was surrounded by walls, it is observed on the 15th, known as Shushan Purim. Now, the law of celebrating Purim on the 15th in walled town and cities is not clearly written in the Megillah, but it is implied. We're going to see that in the Mishnah, Bezrat Hashem Blineder. Now, the main subject of Mesech and Megillah is the mitzvah of the reading of the Megillah on Purim. This mitzvah is mentioned in the Megillah itself. These days should be remembered and celebrated. The days are remembered through reading about them, and every Jew is obligated to read the Megillah or hear, hear it being read from a parchment scroll. It is read twice, once at night and once during the day. And we're going to get into the other mitzvot of Purim. The Megillah describes Purim as days of feasting and gladness, sending portions of food each man to his fellow and gifts to the poor. So three mitzvot we learn from this verse. The Purim feast, how one must partake of a festive meal that includes wine on Purim day, sending gifts of food that you have to give at least two portions of food or drink to at least one person, and gifts to the poor, how you must give food or money to at least two poor people. Now we begin with Perik Aleph, Mishnah Aleph. Today's Mishnah should be Leilu Nishmat, Neria ben Svetlana, Aran Baev, Neriyao ben Burcha Yisraelov, Menuchatam began Eden, Amen, and Lavdi ben Chaim Nechaim, and the Refua Shenema of Daniel Shalom ben Rosa, Betoch Shah Chole Israel. Like we mentioned, the festival of Purim is observed in most places on the 14th of Adar and in walled towns and cities on the 15th. The mitzvah read in Megillah, however, although one of the mitzvot of Purim may at times be performed on certain other dates as well. The Mishnah begins Megillah Nikret Bechad Asar. The Megillah is read on the 11th of Adar, Bishneim Asar on the 12th, Bishosha Asar on the 13th, Barba Asar on the 14th, Bahamisha Asar on the 5th, or on the 15th, Lo Pachot Velo Yoter, but not earlier than the 11th or later than the 15th. The Mishnah explains, Kerachin Amukafin Choma Mimot Yoshua Binun Korin Bahamisha Asar. People who live in Krachim. Now, the word Krach usually means a large city. But here it refers to any town or city that is surrounded by a wall. So people who live in these cities that were surrounded by a wall in the time of Yeshua, the son of Nun, read the Megillah on the 15th of Adar. A walled city is defined in this context as a town or city that was surrounded by a wall in the time of Yeshua. This definition is derived from a scriptural comparison between a verse in the Megillah and a verse in Dvarim that describes town con- towns conquered by the Jewish people on the way to Eretz Israel. As long as a town or city was walled at that point in history, it is a walled city with respect to Purim as well. Although the verse in Dvarim refers to a time when the people were still under the leadership of Moshe, our Mishnah mentions Yoshua who led the conquest of Eretz Israel proper. Since it was Yoshua who fought against the Amalekim, it is appropriate to connect the festival that recalls the defeat of Haman, who was an Amaleki, with Yoshua. Now, the sages who decreed the laws of Purim decided not to base the definition of a walled city on its status during the era of the Megillah, but rather on its status during the era of Moshe and Yoshua. 
they reason that the events of the Megillah took place after the destruction of the first temple, when the towns and cities of Eretz Yisrael lay in ruins. Therefore, if a walled city were to have been defined as once surrounded by walls in the period of the Megillah, the great walled cities of Eretz Yisrael would have, be, would have had to have been designated as open. And that would recall Eretz Yisrael's degradation at that time. So to, pe- to spare Eretz Yisrael from the shame, it was decided to define the town or city by its state when the Jewish people entered Eretz Yisrael. If it had walls then, it is a walled city in regard to Purim, even if its walls were later destroyed. The Mishnah continues, so we, like we said, people who live in cities that were surrounded by a wall in the time of Yeshua, the son of Nun, read the Megillah on the 15th of Adar, Kfarim, Bayerot, Gedolot, Kohen, Barbasar, people who live in villages and large towns. Now the term large town includes any town that is larger than a village. In chapter 1, Mishnah 3, it's going to define the difference between the two, but in this context, both terms refer only to places that are not enclosed by walls. A town or village that does have walls is treated the same as a walled city. So again, people who live in villages and large towns read the Megillah on the 14th of Adar. Except that those who live in villages may bring forward their reading of the Megillah to a day of assembly that precedes the 14th. A day of assembly is either Monday or Thursday when the residents of villages would assemble in towns. Ezra enacted several laws, Ezra Sofer, Ezra described including a requirement that courts, but they didn't, sit in judgment every Monday and Thursday. So as a result, people who lived in villages and did not have their own courts would go to nearby towns on Mondays and Thursdays to have their legal disputes settled. So the Mishnah means that villagers may read the Megillah on the Monday or Thursday that precedes the 14th of Adar. Now villagers often did not know how to read the Megillah, so they would go to a town to have someone there read it for them. To spare them from having to make a special journey, the sages allowed villagers to hear the Megillah on the Monday or Thursday before Purim when they would go to the town anyway. Even when villagers read the Megillah early, they celebrate the festival of Purim on the 14th. Now this date can be the 13th when they read the Megillah, the 12th or the 11th of Adar, depending on which day of Purim, of the, uh, which day of the week, Purim falls. So the next Mishnah discusses each of the possibilities. So that is then the Mishnah Aleph. We continue now with Mishnah Bet. This Mishnah lists all the situations in which the Megillah is read on the 11th, 12th, 13th, 14th, or 15th of Adar. The Mishnah consists of six parts, each one dealing with the 14th of Adar falling on a different day of the week, Monday, Tuesday, or Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Shabbat, and Sunday. So the Mishnah begins, Ketzad, how so? If the 14th of Adal falls on a Monday, those who live in villages and large towns read the Megillah on that day, Monday V, 14th. Now, villagers are allowed to read the Megillah before the 14th of Adal, only when the 14th itself does not fall on a day of assembly, Monday or Thursday. When it does, there is no reason for them to read earlier, since they will travel to the town anyway on the 14th. And those who live in walled cities read it the following day, which is Tuesday the 15th. If the 14th falls on a Tuesday or Wednesday, those who live in villages bring forward their reading of the Megillah to the previous day of assembly, which is Monday, which is either the 13th or the 12th. Regardless of whether the 14th falls on a Tuesday or Wednesday, villagers read the Megillah on the previous Monday. If the 14th falls on a Tuesday, that Monday is the 13th. And if the 14th falls on a Wednesday, that Monday is the 12th. So, so far we have seen how the date for the Megillah reading can be the 12th, the 13th, the 14th, or the 15th. So the Mishnah's final case will show how it can be the 11th. Right, so again we said, If the 14th falls on a Tuesday or Wednesday, Kfarim Makdim Makinisah, those who live in villages bring forward their reading of the Megillah to the previous day of assembly, Monday, which is either the 13th or the 12th. Those who live in large towns read on that day, the 14th, which is either Tuesday or Wednesday. And those who live in walled cities read on the following day, the 15th, which is either Wednesday or Thursday. If the 14th falls on a Thursday, those who live in villages and large towns read on that day, Thursday the 14th, because like we said, they're going anyways to the large towns for the court sessions, and those who live in walled cities read on the following day, Friday the 15th. If the 14th falls on the day before Shabbat, Friday, those who live in villages bring forward their reading to the previous day of assembly, which is Thursday the 13th, and those who live in large towns and walled cities read on that day, 
Friday the 14th. Now the sages ruled that the Megillah should not be read on Shabbat because they feared that a person might carry a Megillah through the street, which is biblically prohibited on Shabbat. Therefore, when the 15th of Adar is a Shabbat, people who live in walled cities may not read the Megillah on that day. Rather, they read it the previous day, Friday the 14th. The reading is not postponed until Sunday because the mitzvah cannot be fulfilled after the 15th. Like the verse says, It may not pass, which teaches that the reading may not pass beyond the dates mentioned, which is the 14th and 15th of Adar. When the 15th falls on the Shabbat, although the residents of the walled cities do not read the Megillah on that day, they must read the other Torah passages and prayers that are obligatory on Purim. There is a dispute regarding the Purim feast. Some poskim require the feast to be held on Sunday. Others require it to be held on Friday. The mitzvah of giving gifts to the poor is performed on the same day as the Megillah reading, so Friday. And the mitzvah of sending gifts of food is performed on the day of the Purim feast, so either Friday or Sunday. The Mishnah Bura discusses this in Orchaim chapter 688, Sivkatan 18. Chaliot ba Shabbat, if the 14th falls on a Shabbat, those who live in villages and large towns bring forward their reading to the previous day of assembly, so Thursday the 12th. And those who live in walled cities read on the next day, Sunday the 15th. Now when the Megillah cannot be read on the 14th because it is Shabbat, it is read on the previous Thursday the 12th. Rather than being read on a Friday, which is just one day before the regular date, the 14th, it is read two days earlier. And the reason is that once the reading date must be moved, it should be moved to the previous day of assembly, which in this case is Thursday. However, when the 15th falls on a Shabbat and the residents of walled cities must read the Megillah earlier, they read it on Friday, not on Thursday because the residents of unwalled towns might read the Megillah that Friday, and it is unacceptable for the residents of walled cities to read the Megillah earlier than the residents of unwalled towns. Chaliot Achara Shabbat, if the 14th falls on the day after Shabbat, so Sunday, those who live in villages bring forward their reading to the preceding day of assembly, which is Thursday the 11th. Now the 11th of Adar is the earliest date for the reading of the Megillah. It is not read any earlier because there is always a day of assembly, Monday or Thursday, within three days of the 14th. And those who live in large towns read on that day, Sunday the 14th. And the residents of old cities read on the next day, Monday the 15th. And that is Anabotayv, today's Mishnah Yomi. Bauch Adonai Le'olam, Amen v'Amen.